Praise the Lord again, global Christian friends, and we thank God for you. We thank God for what he has done, and uh, we see the greatness of God and proving the greatness of God. Uh, uh, you can see, prove, and understand and appreciate the greatness of God when you began to see and understand uh, his glory in the most wonderful sense. You know, show me thy glory and uh, uh, glorify thy son and knowing what the glory of God is like and what is beneath the glory of God, the great fire that is beneath the glory of God. We talked about the state of the world and uh, <clears throat> we want to uh, uh, look at uh, chapter 11, Revelation, because there uh, John was given a reed like unto a rod measuring reed, a measuring rod. Now, that is a great understanding to get up into the knowledge of what it means to have a measuring reed and a measuring rod uh, uh, having been carted across the heavens, the massive heavens, to see the thing that are coming uh, onto the earth being carried in the spirit, and he's always being carried in the spirit across the heavens, and uh, even into higher heavens. We will begin to show those things uh, as we begin to go further. But uh, 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 the angel stood, saying, "Arise and measure the temple of God." I want to make it quite clear that this temple that he is to measure is not. God's museum in heaven. Now, we will get over into God's museum in heaven, and we will begin to see how important his museum is to him when we get over into those areas uh, of looking at his museum in heaven. I, I said before, and I'll say again in passing, that are uh, in that museum, there is an object like heaven. I praise the Lord. There is an object like heaven. And uh, we will uh, get over into those things later on. God said the same. But now we see the altar. And this, uh, this is not a Jehovah J uh, Nisi altar. Uh, the way that Moses built this is not an Abrahamic altar. Uh, and them that worship uh, uh, therein in that temple. Think about that statement. That there are worshiping creatures in the temple of God. Uh, that is in heaven and he himself is sitting on uh, a throne periodically. And I, I just want to make it quite clear uh, from the Apostle Peter that uh, uh, everything that is taking place now and will take place throughout this seven year period of the book of Revelation it will take place while the Word of God is still keeping in store all the things of the heavens. Now, that's a wonderful revelation. That is a wonderful understanding. As Peter said, the heavens which are now are kept in store by the same Word, and they will maintain uh, uh, they're keeping, or it's keeping, until these things are done. In other words, until heaven and earth pass away as prophesied 
by Jesus, they will stay there. They, you know, I, I, I'll put it the way that Jesus said on one occasion. Uh, one jot or one tittle shall not pass away from the law until all is fulfilled. Now, I think we see that. And we understand that and we know that. We are not just speaking out of our mouth, but from the heart, the mind, the spirit, the soul, and his will. And uh, we thank and praise God for that. Now, uh, I, I, I just really uh, want to uh, uh, refer back, if I can, uh, so that uh, you may understand, uh, uh, praise God. Uh, uh, let me just refer back to chapter 10, verse 6 for the moment, because that is where the Lord is leading me at this point in time. Uh, and it says there, And he swear by him uh, that liveth forever and ever who created heaven, and the things that are therein are, and the earth, that's Genesis 1 and 1, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and we look at the sea as not being the Atlantic Ocean, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Aegean Sea and things of that sort, but we look higher because uh, this angel came down with an empirical knowledge from the higher heavens. So he said, uh, uh, there should be time uh, no longer. Think about that statement. We know that there is such a thing called the space-time uh, and the curvature of time, uh, and time is looked that as a fabric, but if there is no time, no more, and that's not coming from the picture, but is coming from this angel uh, that is described here. So we understand the atomic clock and how accurate the atomic clock is and how clocks have been uh, varied in different parts of the world and uh, uh, out in space uh, have been taken on different configurations of time going faster or slower, but he decreed uh, the thing that there should be time um, no more. And uh, I'm just going to uh, 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 say this because we've gone through this before in that uh, seventh verse, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets. Look at those two statements. Time shall be no more. The mystery of God has been finished. Those are two wonderful things to be able to see and in coming to. Now, observe those because if God's are the same, we may get back over into those areas at some other time about this knowledge of this angel that came down from the higher heaven that revealed these things unto John. While he is there, we bless the spirit and the soul of John. And we say, God bless you, global Christian friends. Until the next time, in Jesus' name, amen.